In this video we're going to look at diagnosing the low speed CAN network using the oscilloscope. First of all we'll look at setting up the oscilloscope, then we're going to put some faults on the network and see what effect that has on the vehicle. We'll also look at analysing the waveform so you can tell what kind of fault is on the network. First of all generally you'll find that most vehicles have two different types of CAN network. You usually hear the terms high speed CAN or low or medium speed CAN networks. I'm going to call it low speed CAN. They're very different in the way they look when you get an oscilloscope on them. Also the operating voltages are really quite different. As I said in this video we're going to look at low speed CAN network. Let's have a look at the differences between the two first. So on the board I've drawn up two examples one of a high speed CAN network and one of a low speed CAN network. Straight away you can see the main differences between the two. On the high speed CAN network the voltages start at 2.5 and work out away from each other and on the low speed CAN network the voltages start at 5 volts and 0 volts and actually cross over each other. So it goes without saying the operating voltages are really quite different. On the high speed CAN network, CAN high we've got 2.5 volts to 3.5 volts and CAN low 2.5 to 1.5 volts. On the low speed CAN network, CAN high operates from 0 volts to 3.6 volts, CAN low operates from 5 volts down to 1.4 volts. Easy way to know if you were looking at CAN high or CAN low, the voltage of CAN high always goes up from its resting voltage. Generally high speed CAN systems are found on powertrain or chassis systems where a large amount of data is required for the correct operation of the systems. Low speed CAN we usually find that on body systems, um, however on newer vehicles we tend to find that it's all high speed CAN. However today we'll concentrate on the low speed. So what I'm going to be using today is the PicoScope 2000 series uh, oscilloscope, just picked up this recently, just over £100, really good scope for the money. Um, if you do get yourself one of these scopes, it's going to come with these leads. Now these leads, they work, but they're not so useful for automotive applications. What I went ahead and bought was some of these Hantec oscilloscope leads with the banana connectors on the end, so you can fit your pins. I'll put links to these in the description below. So let's go and connect it up to the car and see what's happening. Got my laptop connected up, ready to go. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so first of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you connect two channels, channel A and channel B. So if you're gonna get one of those automotive cables, make sure you buy two. Also, the connector that we're going into on the body control module has this kind of coded plug on it. You're gonna to have to remove that because in this case, you can't get to the back of the pins. It's not, that, it's not to say that that's the same for every uh, connector. You're gonna, then going to want to go to the wiring diagram and find where CAN high and CAN low are. So I've gone in with back probes. Make sure that you're very careful when pushing these into the pins. It's easy to go a little bit too far and then damage the, the pin. If you're looking for a fault, you might have just created another one. Really good thing about these Hantec cables is that you can piggyback the probes onto one another. This way it's made it possible to take the earth from the same point. Okay, so we're connected up to the network. Um, as you can see on the screen now, we've got one flat line. Channel A is switched on to auto. So before we do anything, we need to make sure that the bus network is awake. Easiest way to do that on this BMW E90 is to hit the stop start button. So we're on auto and it, it's, it's easy to assume that that's the easiest way to get a pattern on the screen. But as you can see at the minute, it keeps flashing into channel over range and we've got stuff all over the shop really. Um, as it's going too high and we know that the voltage is going to be no more than five volts, let's move the range up to a nice safe 10 volts. Okay, so now we've got an image on the screen. It's a little bit erratic though, intermittent. 
uh, one minute's there, one minute it's gone. So what we need to do there is set up a trigger. And we're going to go for the auto trigger. And we see the yellow trigger point on the screen there. We're going to click it, drag it up a little bit. Make sure the bus is awake. <laughs> And there we are, we've got a nice stable pattern. So let's just increase the time a bit so we get a bit more on the screen. And we can also move this trigger along so we can see a full pattern. So there we've got CAN high. We can see the voltage is down at zero volts and goes up. Now let's switch on channel B the same voltage, can low. There we go. So if we freeze by just hitting the stop button there, we can actually pull some cursors down on to take some measurements. So this is the cursor for channel A. We can see it starts zero volts. And goes up to about 3.8 volts, 3.9 volts on this vehicle. So let's have a look at CAN low. Starting at about 5 volts and actually going down to about 1.1 volts. So the figures we talked about earlier are gen generic voltages really and you do sometimes find a little bit of a discrepancy vehicle to vehicle or manufacturer to manufacturer. But the fundamentals are the same. Okay, so the bus network is awake, working. Let's put a fault on and see what happens. So here I'm using a fuse link that I made up. Croc crocodile clip one end and a banana connect to the other end. Let's go in here and we'll try and work out what I've done. Okay, so we can see now, look, can high has just gone flat. What we can do is change, change the trigger to channel B. We can see there, look, it's still working. So if you remember in my last video, we put a fault on the CAN network and nothing worked. Let's have a look what happens now. Nice. Everything's working, the ignition's come on. So why is that? Indicator's working from the stalk, that gives us a good indication that the network's working from the steering column to the gateway, back down to the FRM. got heater controls as well. So this is demonstrating something that the low speed CAN network can do that you won't find will be the same when we get to look at high speed CAN networks. What it's actually working in is single wire mode and you might have seen fault codes for single wire mode in the past. I've certainly seen a lot of single wire fault codes on Volkswagen uh, vehicles and, and Audis and things like that. What we've done then, we've got a short circuit to ground on CAN high. However, the customer's not going to notice any problems there. What you'll notice as a technician though, uh, is you've probably got these single wire fault codes in your uh, diagnostic log. It's up to you if you want to go and find the fault, but it does leave the system quite vulnerable. As we saw in the last video, if both of those wires go down, it's nothing. The vehicle's not even going to start. Okay, so let's do the same for CAN low. So there we are then, can low has gone from its high voltage of 5 volts and we can see now it's sitting right down at 0 volts. Let's change the trigger to channel A so you can see, there we are. Channel A is still working, 
the ignition still comes on and everything works. So what about if we short the CAN networks together? Let's have a look what happens. Okay, so now we can see that the both CAN networks are actually exactly the same. Um, they're working against each other and producing the same voltage there. Let's have a look if it still works. Yeah, everything still works. Ignition's coming on, radio's working, turn signal indicator's working, radio's on, we've got HVAC as well. So we short them together and it still works in single wire mode. Let's see what happens if we've got an open circuit. So what I've done here is de-pinned one of the CAN wires out of the connector. However, I'm still gonna connect up to it to make sure we get a reading. Okay, so what we can see here is we've disconnected CAN low. CAN high is still operating and CAN low is just a flat line and every now and then you kind of see something happen. So let's see if we can capture some of that action there so we just saw a bit there let's freeze it go back ah yes yeah, see so see here we've actually got quite a bit of activity still going on on that network there and what that probably is is communication data coming from another module therefore when it's flat That's the body control module that we've disconnected trying to communicate. Sometimes these open circuit faults can be quite difficult to find. Uh, that's why it's really useful to use that trigger. Really move it around and see what you can find. Let's see if it still operates. So, we've got ignition there. We've still got all the features working. So with the open circuit, we still get the single wire mode. So due to the speed that these networks operate at, it's really difficult to locate an intermittent fault using the oscilloscope. Um, what you see now on the screen is actually just a, a small snapshot of a very large picture. Let's put an intermittent fault onto the network and see if we can see it. So all I'm gonna do is gently tap there. We are getting something, but let's just change the time scale of the oscilloscope and make it a much larger picture. Let's go to two second divisions, separate them out a bit. We can see there, we see that can low dropping intermittently right down to the zero line. So I hope you found this useful and gives you a good insight into uh, how low speed CAN is resistant to different faults and how you might locate some of those issues. You can also diagnose it with a multimeter. It's a little bit more restrictive. Maybe I'll do a video on that next time. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you liked the video today and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.